What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna talk about this iconic B&O speaker. Let's get into it. Welcome back everybody. Today, uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the icon. This is possibly uh, one of the biggest icons B&O has ever made. This is the beautiful Beer Sound A9. It used to go by Beer Play, now it's Beer Sound. They're very strange on the word or on the naming scheme. Uh, I still use Beer Play, but not for everything. I think this is a Beer Sound now. Anyway, I'll probably use it interchangeably because <laughs> of how it once started. It obviously started with a Mark I, and we've arrived at a Mark IV. I won't go through all the differences because. Uh, you can't buy the Mark 1s anymore and the Mark 4 is the only one on offer uh, at the moment. This one is from the Contrast collection. You can tell by, well first of all, the, the very nice contrast rims, the, the dark smoked oak legs and then this uh, quadrat. It's sort of wool. It's, uh, it's, it's different. I, I very much like it. One thing I think they very much improved on is that uh, for everybody thinking it's hard to put a cover on, then if you can see this, they put in these little tabs, which actually it makes it very easy <laughs> to put a cover on. So uh, yeah, I don't have to compete in this with uh, the skinny play uh, <laughs> challenge, and I don't have to beat nine seconds yet. Also, this fabric doesn't really lend itself to putting it on as quickly. If you uh, feel like changing out any of this, uh, you can obviously check out Skinny Play, links down below, or Fat Punk Studio. We're giving away uh, this beautiful cover for uh, an A9. Sunday is the last draw date, so be sure to uh, follow the links down in below to how to compete. It's totally free. It, it has the flowers, I'll put it up like here somewhere. <laughs> and as per usual, you can buy all of your Bino gear right here in Utrecht uh, at Bangen Oosten ter Horst. Uh, links here and down in the description. So let's talk some specs and get them out of the way first. So it has an 8 inch woofer on the back, uh, which is probably going to be B roll. Then we have two 3 inch mid range, uh, two 3 inch mid range drivers here on the side. They have a uh, three quarter inch tweeters either side and then you have uh, two full range drivers uh, on the back. Uh, this is a big change from the Mark II which only basically had speakers facing forward. The Mark III was sort of an in-between and the only thing that really is distinctive about that is that the Mark III uh, didn't have Google Assistant in it. This one does but what I love with b and is you get a hard physical switch to never ever use it, like me, if you don't want to. Or you can set it up as an AirPlay speaker, it's up to you. But uh, if you like Google, it's in there. If you don't like it, switch it off. You can also order it without it. And uh, either works. Then to talk for power, there's a 400 watt amplifier for the 8 inch uh, bass driver. There is two 200 watt drivers for the, the mid ranges on either side. Uh, then there is two 200 watt for the full ranges and two 150 watt for the treble uh, speakers up here, roughly. And that's quite a lot of power. Uh, you won't really use all of it generally, but what it does uh, do very effectively with speakers all around like this is uh, active room compensation. I must say that is one of the best things B&O has done in a long time is put active room compensation uh, in just about every product they sell, uh, especially the newer gen stuff. And it makes a huge difference because you know if you put like a speaker like this with a, a, a bass driver that points back, if you put it in a corner uh, you obviously get a, quite a lot of amplification from the bass, a lot more than if it were, let's say, forward-facing. 
but the the room correction takes care of out of, for all of that and uh, it makes it sound more or less the same wherever you put it in the in the room i must say it, it's quite a a big speaker and i really prefer it on the legs it also comes on a wall uh, bracket uh, if you want although i don't I'm not the biggest fan of that. It's way more iconic like this. Uh, in terms of bass, it goes up to like 95 decibel SP, uh, dB SPL. A maximum loudness of uh, 100 dB SPL uh, in, for everything. And it has a quoted frequency range of 33 hertz to 2300 hertz. The 2300 hertz I can't hear, and neither can you probably. Unless you're superhuman, maybe you're Superman, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the 33 hertz for bass, I actually think it goes a bit lower, but this is probably at like minus nine dB measured roughly. So it, it, it's one of those where they chose to end the frequency ranges. Um, one good thing about the newer ones is you can control it with a beer sound or with a halo be a remote halo uh, it's very easy if you uh, set it like in a corner you don't constantly have to like do that and uh, switching with the halo uh, between products is a lot easier than with the be a remote one but you can also connect the be a remote one to it no issue uh, yeah uh, I think you can actually also let me look quickly at the specs. Uh, you can pair two of them through uh, Google Home for stereo, although it kind of is pointless because it really does stereo sound quite well. Uh, the, the closer you get, the worse it kind of gets. But by close, I mean like you'll be like here, like let's say 15 inches away, like 30 centimeters, something like that. If you are a meter or so away, because of the, the slight angles on the speakers, it, it sounds a lot wider. It sort of sounds like, like left is here or so, and right is about there. So it sounds about a foot wider on either side than it actually is. I did a, a small sound test in, the, in a previous video. I'll link that up here somewhere. But it really is powerful. In terms of like uh, radio, because it has uh, tune-in, it has Deezer built in. Uh, you can obviously on one of the Google commands do Spotify. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can control it through the B&O app. In terms of for like a radio or line-in kind of speaker deal, if I had the space, what I would really love to do is I have a beer sign 9000 over there and just have it in my space like this and just be the CD player, the, the beer sign 9000 connected to this and that would be wonderful because my living room is about um, 7 by 7 meters which is what, like 22 foot by 22 foot or something like that. Uh, don't get me <laughs> on the exact uh, foot measurement, but this more than fills a room, like easily makes it very, very loud. And as like the specs quote, like 95 dB SPL for uh, the bass is sort of where the, the adaptive bass really kicks in. What that kind of means is that any louder it'll protect itself so that the the bass woofer won't like actually start protruding and damaging itself so uh as we all know 90 decibel is really loud and that's at a meter away but like th this is if full tilt too loud for a living room this size uh the, the stereo image is really still quite good if you go full tilt and uh, it doesn't really suffer uh, from anything. And what I most love about this A9, besides the shape, besides 
the feet and how iconic it looks. It sounds great. It's that with people like Skinny Play and or uh, like Van Pong Studio, you can make it your own. You can do whatever you want with this. This is the most customizable speaker uh, you can basically get. Like, let's say you're nuts enough to be a fan of this channel and you want my face on one of these. You could. You could also do your dog or your wife or your girlfriend or your husband. <laughs> you can also have like the Death Star or the world or something actually nice <laughs> to look at. But it is bloody amazing. In terms of standard B&O, it is a real multi-room uh, speaker. So it has like all DNL features. Uh, it has uh, Chromecast and AirPlay, obviously, if you prefer to go that route. Uh, in comparison to like a balance, a beer sound balance, uh, the, the, at the moment that doesn't have a network link. So if you're like a big B&O uh, consumer, it's probably not for you yet because they promised it would come. But with the A9, you don't suffer any of the, well, suffer. You don't suffer any of those issues. Uh, it, it works with everything and you can put it just about anywhere. In terms of sound with the balance, I prefer this one. And uh, don't get me wrong, the balance, BSM balance is very impressive. And especially for its size, it, it comes dangerously close to like BLAP 17s. Um, but just because of the how small it is, like you do get stereo sound, but it's stereo sound from like there to there. Like it's it's not that far. Instead of where this, the stereo sound is about that wide at least. And uh, then it sort of comes down to what do you have the space for? Well, where I live, it's uh, not considered especially large. And uh, as people that watch uh, the podcast uh, fervently, they probably know my living room is fairly full. Uh, my bedroom already has a beer sound stage in it. <laughs> uh, the office is just about the only place where we, we could put something, but we already have an M3 there. So it's like, I don't have the space for it, but I want it so badly. <laughs> It's such a good speaker. It's so, it, it's beyond anything. And it, like, if you're not into B&O and if you're new here, does this look like a speaker? Does anything B&O really make look like a speaker? But especially like a, a form factor like this, it's, it's quite an amazing piece of kit. Uh, I, one thing I would, by the way, however, uh, recommend is getting some kind of remote because the, the, the there is a volume slider and a source slider here on the back and there are little dotted marks. I've had this for a week or two uh, here, if not a bit longer by now. And there's so often where if I don't look and just grab on the back, I, for some reason, and it may be my, my butterfingers <laughs> that I grab either the source button or the Google button. Uh, when I just want to up the volume. And uh, obviously when you uh, take a, a, a be a remote halo with it or uh, be a remote one, you don't have that issue. I love this thing. In, t in terms of sound, in terms of size, in terms of styling, it's basically perfect. And I want B&O you know, to make this a Mark V, 6, 7. They can continue this onwards forever, if, for what I'm concerned, because the form factor is unique. You don't see this anywhere. The sound is really, really good as is. With the years to come, they can probably still improve it. I'm almost questioning myself why. If you have a, a Beer Sound uh, A or Beer Play A9 Mark II, I would consider this a quite a big upgrade. Not just in terms of like uh, the, the raw sound, but also the, the room compensation and uh, a bit of clarity. Uh, they've gotten better. The, there is way more power, but the power isn't all, all that's there. It's the tuning is better. The, 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 the DSP is, is better fine tuned. Uh, I mean, obviously the room compensation makes a huge difference. 
because in, instead of like blaring and echoes, it becomes controlled and precise. And uh, yeah, this thing is a real winner, the Mark IV. Personally, I wish the Google wasn't there, but a lot of people like it. And I like that you have the option uh, to just switch it off. Uh, yeah, customize your world, go to Skinny Play, go to Fat Punk Studio. Uh, also, uh, enter for the competition. And uh, yeah, if you're in the market for an A9 or a balance, if you have the room, I honestly say go for an A9 because it's great. Uh, in the sense you, you get a bit more, you get a bit more styling. This is this is real b &O in my opinion. The balance looks a bit, I don't know. It's nice, but it's not as nice as this, if you get my drift. This, this is more, not designer, but that's what everybody says. This is a better designed total to me. Especially with the legs. You, you can get the legs in every which color you just about can dream of. They even have aluminium legs now. Uh, yeah. If you haven't noticed already, I'm kind of in love with this one. And I wish uh, I had a lot of room extra for it because I want one. And uh, who knows? I <laughs> actually keep it. <laughs> well, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, like and subscribe to stay in the loop. And uh, hope you all have a good one. And uh, see you on the podcast. Bye.